Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us at our e event this morning. I hope everybody had a good time this morning and learned some valuable information. Uh, my name is Michelle Good, and I'm the Communications and Public Engagement Director for the City of Fort Worth. And I'd like to welcome you to the 16th Annual Fort Worth Neighborhood Awards. A big thank you to Doxology Church for hosting us today in this wonderful facility. I'd like to invite lead pastor Chris Freeland to give the invocation. And then after the invocation, if you could continue eating, he's going to share his thoughts on the art of neighboring. Would you join me in prayer, please? Father, what an incredible privilege it is to gather together uh, as people from different backgrounds, uh, with different stories, different histories, different perspectives, all to gather together because we love this city and we love the people in it. And as uh, we continue to talk about how we can be better at that and uh, listen to how we can be better at that, Lord, I pray that some of the very best ideas in this city uh, would be things that are born out of the conversations that we have today and the people that are gathered together in this room. Uh, we want to be the kind of city that's different for all the right reasons. And so, uh, Lord, with all of the struggles, with all of the challenges, with all of the friction, with all of the hard things in our culture, Lord, we pray that this would be the kind of city that stands apart. It's a city that genuinely is known by people who love each other well. And we ask, uh, Lord, that you would allow steps to be taken towards that today. Thanks for this food and the people who have provided it. Uh, we are grateful for all of this. In Christ's name, amen. amen. You know, uh, people keep telling us thank you for uh, hosting this event, and I just need to make sure you're aware. Uh, some of you I know are familiar faces. Some of you are not. I feel like I need to be the one telling you thank you uh, because this event and all of you gathered together today is a really specific answer to some really specific prayers that we've prayed uh, together as a church, uh, both in the past and presently, we continue to pray. We want to be just the kind of people that uh, if there are needs within our city, that we're the kind of people that people would call uh, in order to lean towards those needs. And so to have uh, people like you who are also uh, thinking those thoughts uh, gathered together to have those conversations this is a really, really big deal that we are grateful for to be able to host you. So thank you guys for being here and for all the incredible things you do to make Fort Worth a really great place to live. Uh, we're grateful to be able to host you. Uh, the, the team that's putting this together asked me to just spend a couple of minutes, and anytime you give the microphone to a preacher and ask him for a couple of minutes, you kind of got to hold your breath, don't you? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to that, just a few minutes, uh, to tell you some of the thoughts that we've been thinking in, when it comes to the art of neighboring. And just really briefly, I would tell you, uh, I believe you would be really, really, really hard-pressed to find any of our cultural ills or societal ills or the things that keep some of us awake at night that couldn't be solved if all of us would take Jesus' words, love your neighbor as yourself, seriously and personally. And here we believe even literally, to literally love the people who fall asleep 40 feet from your head like we love ourselves. And so uh, around here, that started, uh, we started praying for that a long, long time ago, but we decided we were going to start trying to take some specific steps towards that uh, because uh, it, it's hard to just go from zero to 100 miles an hour uh, in one step. So we just wanted to take some specific steps towards it. And so really early on, we uh, just decided it's awfully hard to love people if you don't know their name. So we started to challenge every single person who's a part of this congregation, at least, uh, to just take a tic-tac-toe grid and put your house in the middle, and we ask our congregation one Sunday morning, hey, who can name all of the houses that surround your house, or all of the names of the people that live in the apartment com complexes surrounding your complex? So actually, you guys are the rock stars of neighboring. I'm interested in how many of you, how many of you could name every person that lives in the house across the street for you, or just in front of you, all three houses? Houses, each house on either side of your house and all of the houses behind you, the three houses behind you. How, how many of us could name every single name of every single person? Isn't that incredible? Now listen, here's what we tell our congregation because I know that laugh, that nervous laugh, the preacher knows that's a shameful laugh, okay? 
This is a grace place. Uh, we, don't, we don't do the shame thing here at Doxology Bible Church. And so what we always tell people is, hey, if you weren't able to, ha- to raise your hand, you know what your next step is. And we just gave that to everybody who's a part of our congregation. If you don't know all eight of those names and all uh, eight of those households, you've got something you can do this week. You've got a step, and every single person can take that step. And so uh, we would come back again and ask the question again, how many people can name all eight of the houses next to you? And every single time we would do it, more and more people would be able to raise their hand. And we would uh, begin to, to celebrate that. We just wanted to give people a step that they could take towards loving their neighbor. And then after they began to know all of the names of the people around them, we gave them some more steps. And here we use the acronym, we want to be people that bless our neighbor. Now, this is a church thing, so we begin with prayer. That's bless. B in bless is beginning with prayer. We pray. It, it's hard to love people if you believe in a God who answers prayer if you're not willing to pray for the people around. So we just ask that God would bless the people that live all around us in our, in, in our neighborhoods. Then we want to listen. That's the L in, in bless. Uh, we want to listen. We want to listen to their stories. We want to listen to their hurts. We want to listen to their struggles. We want to listen to their problems. We want to listen for the things that they're saying that they're not really saying. And we want to be people that are great listeners. Then we want to eat with people. Then we want to serve people. Then we want to share stories with each other uh, because we believe if we can be people that bless the people that live on either side of us, we can be the kind of people uh, that are loving our neighbors like we love ourselves. And some really, really extraordinary things have happened uh, in our neighborhoods as a result of that. And I'll just give you a couple. Uh, We had people that started to get really creative about how they could eat with each other and how they could listen to each other. And they started to notice, you know, about once a month, we have one of those random holidays that nobody knows about. Nobody really celebrates. Nobody has plans, but everybody knows it's Groundhog's Day. That was our most recent one, right? And so they just decided, you know, everybody knows it's Groundhog Day. Nobody's doing anything on Groundhog Day. What if we did something? something for our neighbors on Groundhog Day, and we just cooked a pot of soup, told everybody we're going to celebrate, come over and, uh, and grab some soup on your way home from work, and they had dozens of neighbors that just stopped by and they ate together. They listened to each other, they met each other for the very first time, and began to take steps towards loving each other, people that were, they were really different from. Uh, do the same thing on St. Patrick's Day. I mean, there's one every single month. April Fool's Day, what a great day to get everybody together uh, for a meal, right? Especially some of the people that live next to you, you know what I'm talking about, right? So we just decided that we would take some steps towards it. We had another one on Veterans Day that I thought was incredible. We had a lady that just decided, you know what, nobody ever celebrates Veterans Day, and we're going to celebrate Veterans Day. And so she went door to door and just said, hey, are you or do you know anybody in our neighborhood who's a veteran? And she made these really incredible signs uh, just to honor the, the person that had served in our, in our armed forces, when they served, where they served, and, uh, and, and what they did in the military. And they made these signs, and they had over, everybody over to their house for a barbecue. There was a guy that had lived in the neighborhood for decades, but had never been a part of anything in the neighborhood, didn't answer his door when she knocked on the door, but somebody else who had lived in the neighborhood a lot longer than him knew who he was and knew his story, and he just happened to notice that there was a Veterans Day party that was going on in their neighborhood he came out of his house walked across the street nobody else had ever seen him outside he walks across the street and he sees his name and his rank and the theater that he served in in world war ii listed on a sign right there he started to sob he thought i didn't know that anybody else knew i didn't know that anybody else cared and now They're on a first-name basis every time he goes out to get his mail. Incredible, incredible things that happen just from people taking some really small steps. One other guy moved into a cul-de-sac. He was a racial minority on that cul-de-sac. He's a racial majority uh, otherwise, but he walked and moved into this cul-de-sac, and he started to look around and realize that everybody in the cul-de-sac, when the World Cup was going on, they were all having parties and people over to their house because they were all cheering for the same team. And so he just decided, you know, what do we have in common? I don't, I'm not cheering for that team. I really don't understand a whole lot about that, but I bet we could start an indoor soccer team uh, with our neighborhood. So he just went knock, uh, knocking on the doors, and he said, hey, would you guys be interested in playing indoor soccer with us? They started a team every single week they play together and then they come back and they tailgate in their driveway after their games after their kids are all in bed they're having an incredible time when needs come up they've walked through cancer together they've walked through the death of a child together they've walked through um losses of jobs together they're meeting each other's needs and it all started with watching soccer and playing on an indoor soccer team there are no end to the kind of connections that can be made if people just decide to take it seriously 
and love their neighbor. And so uh, that's the journey that our church is on. We're trying to, to make sure that in every single neighborhood in Southwest Fort Worth, there's a group of people who were actively loving their neighbor as we love ourselves. So to somebody, and this is doxology, it comes from two words, doxa and logos, I mean doxa is glory, how God shows who he is and what he's like. Logos means word, how God declares who he is and what he's like. We want to be the kind of people that show and say who God is and what he's like wherever they go, starting with the people who fall asleep 40 feet from our head. And now, we're not perfect at this, and it's messy. I mean, you know this, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, right? It's messy, it's hard, we haven't got it all figured out, but we believe that we're playing a long game just like you do. And in our faith tradition, you don't have to believe this, but we absolutely believe this, uh, that love paid the ultimate sacrifice with eternity in mind. So if we want to be people that look like him and sound like him wherever we go, we can afford to make the sacrifice en route to loving actual people who are actual neighbors as a part of making this one of the most extraordinary cities on the planet. That's our heart, I know that's your heart, and that's why we are so, so grateful that you guys are here. What a privilege it is to be together with you. Thanks for being in our building. We're glad you guys are here. Thank you, Pastor Freeland. Um, We have several elected officials joining us today. Will you please stand when I call out your name? Um, Tarrant County Judge Glenn Whitley, is he still here? I know he was here this morning. He might not have stayed for the lunch. Uh, Mayor Betsy Price, who you'll hear from in a few minutes. Uh, City Council Members Carlos Flores. Brian Bird, <laughs> Carrie Moon. I don't think he. I don't think he's here. I haven't seen him. Today is his birthday, by the way. So, um, Gina Bivens. I don't think she is here either. Um, Jungus Jordan, <laughs> Dennis Shingleton. Kelly Allen Gray, and Ann Zeta. Thank you for all you do for our city. We also have many city staff members here today. I'm too many to name, but would all of you stand if you are a City of Fort Worth employee? We do have our city manager here, David Cook. Thank you. Now I'd like to recognize the group that pulled this event together today, um, the community engagement team. The mission of the community engagement office is to connect you with city services and each other in order to build a strong community. Our team members work year-round with your neighborhoods, schools, after-school programs, civic and faith-based groups, providing information, presentations, and training. I want to thank them for working really hard on today's workshops, exhibits, and awards luncheon. It takes a lot of work to pull this event together, and I appreciate all of their work. If they would please stand when I call their name. Ruth Barajas. (laughs) Tabitha Butler. (laughs) Barry Cram. Tracy Edwards, Madeline Gibbs, Dot Kent, Brenda Penner, and then their manager, Katherine Huckabee. I'm sure all of you have already worked with them, but I encourage you to, to reach out with them and be engaged with them as much as you can in order to help your neighborhoods. The City of Fort Worth has been giving neighborhood awards to recognize the projects and activities for many years. This helps make Fort Worth a great place to live, work, and play. Today we will be recognizing our outstanding neighborhood newsletters. We'll also hand out awards in um, each of these categories. So mandatory homeowners associations or HOAs will compete against each other. 
Voluntary, na voluntary neighborhood associations will compete against their peers. And we will also give out four individual awards today, including a new award recognizing the neighbor of the year. And finally, we will name Fort Worth's neighborhood of the year. The winners today were selected by a panel of judges from other area municipalities who reviewed all of the nominations and chose the winners. And we want to thank them for their time. It was a very time consuming task because we had so many nominations. Our first awards recognize excellence in communications, which is critical to bringing neighbors together. Newsletters are judged on content and appearance as well as how well they reach their intended audience. As I announce your names, would the editor or an officer please come forward to receive their award? And Mayor Price, would you join me on the stage for pictures? We will take a group photo once we have all of the recipients up here. And I would ask that when people come up to get their awards, when you're going back down to your table, to be careful because there's a little bit of an uneven edge on the stairs and we don't want anyone to fall. So would these um, organizations please come up? Crawford Farms HOA, Heritage HOA, Marine Creek Community Association, Marine Creek Meadows HOA, and Quail Ridge Estates Phase 2 HOA. While they're having their picture taken, I'll tell you a little bit more. These HOAs produce anywhere between 2 and 12 newsletters each year. Many also send weekly email updates. Costs are covered by HOA dues and often supplemented by the sale of ads. Highlights include news you can use, such as city bulk trash pickup dates, explanations of dues and how they are spent, and lots of resident photos. Thank you. Let's have a round of applause. In the voluntary association category, our newsletter awards go to Crestwood Association, Eastern Hills, Mistletoe Heights, and Ridgely North. Would representatives from those neighborhoods come up to receive their awards? Most of these neighborhoods post electronic newsletters on their website or email them directly to members. Some still deliver printed copies, either by mail or by block captains. They also sell ads to help offset printing and postage costs. If you'd like to see samples of these award-winning newsletters, please contact the associations directly or you can call the Community Engagement Office. The Fort Worth Pride Award is given to an organization that improves the physical aspects of the neighborhood. Winners in this category may have completed beautification projects, community cleanups, park or garden projects, or worked with the city's code compliance or other departments to make their neighbor neighborhood cleaner and more attractive. Will the HOA finalists please stand at your table as I read your names? Marine Creek Meadows HOA for its landscaping and grounds improvement program. An annual tree planting program that started three years ago was expanded in 2018 to include the addition of pet way stations along a walking trail, fence improvements, wrought iron benches near a fountain and play area, volunteer hours extended the budget and helped create a sense of community, and the Trails of Fossil Creek HOA. They were recognized for their multifaceted beautification program, what started as a creek cleanup project grew to include tree plantings in a park, the addition of pet waste stations, trash and recycling cans, and a community Earth Day celebration. And the winner is the Trails of Fossil Creek HOA. <laughs> Would Council Member Shingleton please come up and join them? While they're coming to the stage to get their picture taken and receive their award, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about their projects. The original objective was to improve the appearance of a creek running through the trails of Fossil Creek Park, where high, where high cattails and trash had accumulated, but the plan grew into a full-fledged beautification project. Association leadership applied to the City Forestry Division, Tree Grant Program, 
and received 45 trees to plant in the park. They purchased three dog waste stations and worked with the city to install them in the park, as well as add trash cans and repair broken sidewalks. Then the association planned and hosted an Earth Day celebration. The fun event attracted neighbors who joined with Girl Scouts to clean the creek as part of Keep Fort Worth Beautiful's Cowtown cleanup. Now the association is looking at officially adopting the park and requesting more trees to reforest phase, phase two. Congratulations to the Trails of Fossil Creek. In the Voluntary Association category, the judges chose to recognize just one neighborhood for the Fort Worth Pride Award. The winner is Tanglewood Neighborhood Association. Please come forward to receive your award and would Council Member Byrd come up for the pictures. While they're coming up, I'd like to tell everyone about the Tanglewood Tree Planting Project. Tanglewood is known for its trees, and some of them are more than 200 years old. They provide shade and beauty to the neighborhood. But in March 2017, a strong storm ripped off giant limbs and uprooted entire trees throughout the neighborhood. In an email survey, the association learned that more than 85% of residents had lost one or more trees in the last 10 years. So they set out to replant. The association negotiated purchase discounts from a local nursery, and they also took advantage of the city's free five-gallon tree program, and this allowed neighbors of all incomes to participate in the project. The tree planting project was publicized with yard signs, a tree float in the 4th of July parade, info tables at association meetings and social events, and even a tree costume contest at the annual Halloween block party. In all, Tanglewood neighbors planted a total of 120 new trees last fall. Another big bonus, the project attracted numerous volunteers who had never participated in any association activities before. Congratulations to Tanglewood. Our next award is the Spirit of Fort Worth Award. It is given to associations that foster social revitalization, enhance cultural aspects of the neighborhood, or just simply make residents feel welcome and connected playing or celebrating together. While the, will the HOA finalists please stand at your table as I read your names? Harvest Ridge HOA. They are recognized for a community social event that also collected school supplies for children in North Fort Worth. A neighbor's social media post was the catalyst for a cookout that resulted in more than 100 school supply kits for needy families. And Quail Ridge Estates Phase 2 for its food truck socials. The idea was to try something new to encourage residents to get to know and watch out for each other. And the winner is the Quail Ridge Estates Phase 2. And Council Member Jordan is coming up to join them. A little bit more about their project. The HOA's first food truck event coincided with a neighborhood-wide garage sale in the spring. The idea was to get neighbors to hang around after the sale and get to know each other over a meal before heading home. Feedback was positive, so they scheduled a second food truck event in the fall. That event also resulted in longtime residents meeting new neighbors, and some visited with each other for hours. After both events, the HOA reports increased community engagement, which has translated into more suggestions for neighborhood activities and a greater understanding of official board decisions. Congratulations to Quail Ridge Estates, Phase 2. For our Voluntary Association Spirit of Fort Worth finalists, please stand as I read your names. The Garden of Eden Neighborhood Association. This is for its letter writing project to new military enlistees from the community. As the association members gathered for their annual National Night Out event, they wrote letters and placed them in care packages, which were later mailed to new recruits who were serv serving far from home. And the Ridgely Hills Neighborhood Association. 
for organizing its first ever 4th of July parade to honor local veterans. Months of planning included creating a parade route, getting a permit, recruiting business sponsors, and lining up volunteers for traffic control. And the winner is Richley Hills Neighborhood Association. If Council Member Bird can come up again. While they're coming up, I will tell you a little bit more about their project. Ridgely Hills residents wanted to start an annual Independence Day parade to honor veterans and involve the whole community. They formed a planning committee that included volunteers, their NPO, a constable, and local business person who lived in the neighborhood. After mapping a parade route and getting a permit, the committee came up with sponsorship opp opportunities to raise money and offset costs. Neighborhood children took messages door to door to make sure veterans and older residents who aren't on social media were invited. Nearby schools and nonprofits were invited to enter a float in the parade at no charge to recognize their organizations. A Boy Scout troop put out flags along the parade route and high school ROTC color guard led the parade. The association gave awards for parade entries that organizations and businesses can display all year then passed down to next year's winners. Congratulations, Ridgely Hills, for your spirit of Fort Worth. And now I'd like to ask Mayor Price to present the next awards. Good afternoon. Is everybody having, I had to stop and think what time of day it was. <laughs> Is everybody having fun? Are you ready for a seventh inning stretch here? You know, I have the pleasure today of presenting several awards, but this one is particularly dear to me because this is our Community Health Award. And since Fort Worth became the largest city in the world to be Blue Zone certified in 2018, that's a huge achievement. You may, I'll give you just a statistic so you'll understand the impact of that. When we started the project five and a half years ago, and the Gallup well-being of the top 190 cities, Fort Worth was ranked number 185. This year when we were certified, we were ranked 58th healthiest in five years. That's a huge change. This award is Health and Wellness Award, and it goes to the neighborhood that's had a significant effort to promote exercise, better health, safety, recreation, and engagement that leads to a better quality of life for everyone in our city. The judges named three finalists, and when I call you, would you please stand at your table with the names. The Como Neighborhood Advisory Council for your health and wellness partnership. They organized a 10-week MOI. If you don't know what a MOI is, it's an engagement, walking, visiting to keep your neighbors accountable, to get to know them, and put on a fall festival, hosted garden days, service projects, all aimed at encouraging people to get out, get engaged, and get more physical activity and healthier eating in their daily routine. The pursuit of purpose was the other part of theirs. Eastgate Neighborhood. Stan. Eastgate put in an amazing community garden. It not only feeds their hungry neighbors with fresh produce, but they partnered with the YMCA in their area to teach families and children and provide a learning space for Fort Worth ISD students. Far too often when you go to visit, with, particularly with children, they have no clue where fresh fruits and vegetables come from or how to fix them and make them edible. So thank you for setting that example, Eastgate. And the third finalist is the Fairmont Neighborhood Association. Would you all stand? There they are. They sponsored a 1K and 5K and one mile run in their neighborhood, an inaugural event that wound through Magnolia Avenue and through Ryan Place in Fairmont. They had some 400 runners participate in their first event and raised $5,000 that they donated back to children's charities for health. Thank you. Drum roll. 
The winner is, there you go, Eastgate Neighborhood. If you would join us on stage. Council Member Shingleton. While they're coming up and they're posing for pictures, I'll tell you a little bit more about their project. Eastgate built its first community garden several years ago, but had to abandon it when the property was no longer available. They began searching for a new location and partnered with the YMCA Camp Carter, who was looking to start a youth learning garden. During a community work day, dozens of volunteers rebuilt and replanted the beds, and soon vegetables began sprouting. There was just one problem. A herd of deer found the garden <laughs> and proceeded to dev devour every leaf. The neighbors were devastated, but only temporarily. The Y got grant funds for fencing, and Eastgate volunteers helped install it. Veggies were growing again, and the new fence kept the deer out. The garden's open gate policy allows visitors to take fresh food when they need it and do chores if they're able. And the Y uses the garden to teach hundreds of children where their food comes from. Congratulations to the Eastgate neighbors. Okay, the next award, congratulations to Eastgate, is all about partnerships and making it happen on, in a way to make something big happen in your neighborhoods. Civic Engagement and Community Collaboration Award honors significant, innovative, creative initiatives that often pick a challenge and define it. It recognizes an association that worked with city staff, elected officials, schools, businesses, and any other civic group who was interested to find a solution and bring a positive change to your neighborhood. We'll begin with the HOA finalist. If you would stand as I read your name, Heritage Homeowners Association. They're back there, there they are. <laughs> Theirs was an all in for the blue event hosted by the Heritage Poker Club. Members gathered raffle and silent auction prizes sold tickets for a poker tournament, and arranged in-kind food donations. Volunteers and donations helped them raise more than $20,000 for Fort Worth POA, Police Officers Assistance Fund. Thank you for caring about our officers. So if you're a poker player, you know where to go now. The next nominee is the Villages of Woodland Springs HOA. Their back to school celebrations, they sponsored a charity school drive and a free garage sale. Neighbors dropped off gently used clothing, household items, volunteers sorted them, freshened them up, and nearby neighbors could pick out whatever they needed to get their children and themselves ready for another year at school. Thank you for caring about those around you. And the winner is the Villages of Woodland Springs HOA. Councilmember Shingleton. This annual back to school celebration started in 2013 as a fun end of summer party. But in 2018, the event grew significantly to incorporate a free garage sale and school supply drive for a local charity. Here's how it worked. Residents donated clothing, baby supplies, household items, and school supplies. Volunteers sorted the items and helped community members shop for what they needed. But there were no price tags. Everything was free. The event was held just before the Texas Tax-Free Shopping Weekend, so families were able to mark many items off their lists before ever doing their back-to-school shopping. Businesses donated food, face painting, bounce houses, and more, so everyone had fun. In addition to those free garage sale items, the event allowed a charity called Donation House to provide more than 120 school supply kits, 350 closing, clothing kits, and nearly 100 backpacks, as well as free haircuts. Congratulations to the Villages of Woodland Springs.
What a great example of caring about our kids and families and getting them back into school. We appreciate that. The next award is the Civic Engagement Finalist for the Voluntary Neighborhood Associations. Once again, if you would stand when I call your name, Berkeley Place Neighborhood Association. There you are. They established a coalition with six other neighborhoods, businesses, schools, city officials to get approval to silence three railroad crossings that have been keeping neighbors up at night. That's a major effort. Thank you. And the Ridgely North Neighborhood Association for their community connection event. They lined up dozens of speakers and information tables with information for residents to talk one-on-one -on -one with city staff about their needs with nonprofits and with school and business groups so that everyone stays engaged. Well, I just lost my page here. I hate that. And the winner is Ridgely North Association. <laughs> Council Member Byrd. One of Ridgely North's goals last year was to better connect neighbors with city and social services. A leadership brainstorming session came up with Community Connection, a one-stop resource fair where residents could get answers and even resolve ongoing concerns on the spot. First, leaders consulted their annual resident survey to compile a list of agencies and city departments that neighbors wanted to hear from. They partnered with a nearby elementary school to provide indoor space large enough for more than a dozen exhibit tables and asked local businesses to donate snacks and bottled water. They b then booked their city council representative and NBO MPO to give opening remarks and encouraged members to visit all the tables around the room. Leaders say the event broke down perceived barriers to information access. They've already started to plan an even larger event with Ridgely Area Neighborhood Alliance for this spring. Congratulations, Ridgely North. <laughs> now Mayor Price will present our individual awards. Isn't it impressive what these neighborhoods can do? You come together. I love to tell cities when I have the chance to visit with their mayors at conferences what we're doing here, and a lot of them are truly astounded that people still know the, all their neighbors and get out and get engaged. So all of you are the winners for making Fort Worth better. This one is for neighborhood, neighbor of the year is the first one we're going to do. These are outstanding individuals. I want to point out that these were not nominated by any of your elected officials or city staff, but rather by the neighbors in their community, by each and every one of you. This is a new award this year for Neighbor of the Year. When I call your name, would you, you want to come forward, all of them? Okay, everybody come forward on this one. Carol and Ray Fain. Carol and Ray were nominated by the Fairmont neighborhood for helping neighbors preserve and restore woodwork in their historic home. If you don't know these two, trust me, they are the Energizer bunnies that you can't keep up with. Next nominee is Darren George. Darren? <laughs> nominated, by the Ber nominated by the Berkeley Place for his work on challenging neighborhood initiatives, as well as assisting senior citizens in his neighborhood to feel at home and be able to connect. Darren, thank you. Next nominee is Cheryl Mix. Cheryl? <laughs> Cheryl was nominated by the Villages of Woodland Springs for her charitable work with helping neighbors in need of school supplies, holiday gifts, and much more, making them know that a neighbor cares. Cheryl, thank you. <laughs> and Tabitha Williams. Tabitha was not, there's Tabitha way back there. Nominated by Wedgwood East for keeping her neighbors informed, reconnecting them with lost pets, and serving as a COP, Citizens on Patrol. And
any other issue that arose that needed a neighbor to be involved. Tabitha, thank you. Thank you all for your service and dedication, and thank you for nominating this outstanding group. And the winner is Darren George from Berkeley Place. Neighbors say that Darian George is an action-oriented guy. In just one year, he has helped secure a crosswalk on Forest Park for safer passage to Tilly Park, advocated for neighbors by meeting with owners of a large storage facility and getting them to fix poor drainage and clean up construction trash. He pushed to finish a neighborhood sidewalk initiative that provides a safe walk to school for children and he helped get a stop sign approved for a busy neighborhood street. But neighbors say that Darian also takes his role as a good neighbor very seriously. I'd like to read an excerpt from the, his nomination. Darian has taken over as watchful eye for our elderly neighbor at the end of the street, raking his leaves and trimming trees. This year we had a tragic situation occur where a neighbor lost her husband and Darian immediately mobilized the neighborhood to make sure friends were made aware and a meal train was started. He also hosted a party for the entire neighborhood in his backyard, not a task many neighbors would be up for. Congratulations to the neighbor of the year, Darian George. The Mayor's Council Committee for People with Disabilities is a group of citizens volunteers Fort Worth's Human Relations Commissions and make Fort Worth a welcoming community for all. We want to make certain that no one is left behind just because they aren't able to do it on their own. They sponsor for us the Danny Scarth Trailblazer Award. Named for former council member Danny Scarth, who I don't think Danny is here with us today. Yeah. We're so glad to have y'all support for this. Thank you for being on stage. This award recognizes someone who in their everyday life raises the awareness and makes real changes to improve opportunity for people with disabilities. The finalists are Ronnie Bellamy. Ronnie? An advocate for people who are blind or living with other disabilities. Through the National Federation for the Blind chapter, she provides resources, information at all health fairs. She is part of the effort that just this past October amended the U.S. copyright laws to help provide reading material in accessible formats for those with print disabilities. She gives beep basketball, beep baseball demonstrations at sports camps for all visually impaired children and she helps other blind individuals find volunteer opportunities in their community. Ronnie says, in addition to giving these folks confidence, they give back so much to her, and each and every one of us can show what it's like that people with disabilities can do more than people expect of them. Ronnie, thank you. <clears throat> Our next nominee is Dorothy Hill. Dorothy is an advocate for high quality in-house care for persons who depend on a ventilator. She brought together physicians, respiratory therapists, and medical equipment providers to improve care and support teams for those who must live with a ventilator and for those who care for them. Here in Fort Worth, Dorothy works the phones to connect individuals with resources that they might need and provides expertise in housing issues for the disabled. At the state level, Dorothy travels to Austin at her own expense to advocate for Texas Health and Human Services Commission to put ventilator care upon the lawmakers' agenda. Dorothy, thank you. I'm not sure Dorothy, there's Dorothy. Thank you. And our next nominee is Ron Rodney Wade. Is Rodney here? There's Rodney. Rodney is co-founder and president of Fort Worth ISD's Special Ed PTA. In 2018, he and the volunteers he recruited 
created a formal district-wide PTA to advocate for children with special needs and special accommodations. His group educates parents and teachers about special needs services that are available for the students with physical, cognitive, and learning disabilities. The group also serves as a liaison to Fort Worth ISDs on important issues such as transportation for special ed kids. The inaugural back to school meet and greet gave parents a chance to network with other parents. Oftentimes, these parents have been isolated. It's a golden opportunity. Rodney, thank you. And the winner is Dorothy Hill. They're an amazing group who works hard on behalf of all of us to make life even better. Our next award is for code compliance, is for the code compliance department for code officer of the year. It's your neighborhood code officer and you know how critical their work is. They routinely patrol the assigned neighborhoods for code violations as well as investigate your complaints. In fact, I called a code director just yesterday when one of my neighbors had an issue with a dog and a cat fight that did not end well. Got a prompt response and immediately it was taken care of. Code Officer of the Year recognizes an officer who in addition to investigating, documenting, and ensuring that complaints are handled according to city regu regulations, he also, or she, responds courteously, effectively, promptly, and maintains great standards of customer relationships at all times. Will the finalists please stand and remain standing as I read your name? Alfonso Otador, I probably butchered it, Alfonso. I know exactly where he's sitting. Alfonso was nominated by Arlington Heights and the Sunset Neighborhoods, two neighborhoods together who recognize his work. Thank you. Jeff Payne, nominated by the South Hills South Neighborhood. Jeff. Thank you for your responsive work. And Ray Salinas, nominated by the New Mitchell Boulevard and United Riverside Neighborhoods together. Okay, would you all come forward? Thank you. And the winner is Ray Salina. Will the new Mitchell Boulevard, would the neighborhoods that nominated Ray, New Mitchell Boulevard, and United Riverside come forward for a group photo also? Kelly, this, is this one yours? Yes. Come on. If y'all nominated him, come on. Of course you can. Our Code Officer of the Year, neighbors say he does an outstanding job keeping the neighborhood clean and safe, dealing effectively with illegal dumping and junk vehicles. They say he also collaborates with other city departments to help fix problems that are outside code compliance responsibilities. Neighbors say he also brings compassion to the job, for example, helping an elderly neighbor who had accumulated fees and fines while he was away from home receiving medical care. To quote one neighbor, in doing investigative work, Officer Salinas can find whispers in a whirlwind. Thank you. I do think that oftentimes our code department and the hard work that these men and women do goes forgotten until you have a problem or until you have a trash dumped in your neighborhood or stray dogs or cats. But let's give them another round of applause. Brandon Bennett is back here. And our next award is the Neighborhood Police Officer of the Year, Patrol Officer of the Year, the NPOs as we commonly refer to them. I bet every one of you in this neighborhood know the majority of the NPOs. 
You either have one that you've had a long time or you've had several rotate through. They do the additional patrols, identify the crime trends in the neighborhoods or geographic area that they're assigned to. They must communicate with you, the businesses, back to us at City Hall, attend your community meetings when they might rather be at home, volunteer for foster events and community leadership, and help us recruit Citizens on Patrol volunteers. They often are the single face in the police department that you know. They too tend to be our unsung heroes. Thank you to all the NPOs in the room. When I read your name for the finalists, would you just come forward so we'll have you here for photos and a certificate? The first one is Daniel Adobo. Corey Carpenter. Eric Charles. Tracy Doherty. Doug Guilford. Belle Haddad. Jorge Hernandez, Nestor Martinez, Matt McClellan, Deliric McNeil, Alan Pennington, and Jennifer Russell. Come over this way, guys. We have a record number of nominees this year, which means each and every one of you, which means that these guys and girls are doing a great job of connecting for us to have this many nominees. We'll wait till they all get up here and announce the winner. <laughs> I'll miss Jennifer. And the winner is Belle Haddad from the West Division. I bet you can guess who nominated Bell, the Ridgely Norris Neighborhood Association. Would you all stay with us for a minute for pictures? I'd like to say I'd like to share what the neighbors have to say about Officer Haddad and his personal investment in helping the association bring residents together. He has created a kids' mini police academy for National Night Out. He gives regular crime prevention tips in the monthly association newsletter, checks on construction projects in the area to prevent vandalism and theft, invites neighbors to join him for a bike ride or work out at the local gym, and has helped organize an NPO roundtable with other area neighborhoods. Here's a quote from one of the residents. Officer Haddad could very well be an honorary membership chair for the association, because we often receive online applications from new neighbors who, he, who say that he stopped by to introduce himself when he noticed their moving van in the neighborhood and then encouraged them to join the neighborhood association. Let's give this crew one more round of applause. They really do a great job. Our neighborhoods would not be what they are in Fort Worth without our NPOs and their hard work and without all our, our police department, fire department, code, and all of city staff. The real award you've been waiting for all day is our final award for Neighborhood of the Year. It's a really big deal, folks. You were nominated for excellence in all areas, collaboration, health, beautification, and the social connection aspects in your neighborhood. Judges chose the Neighborhood of the Year from among all of the finalists for all of the awards in every, commit, in every category. And the city's community engagement office will send a representative from the winning neighborhood 
to the USA National Competition in Palm Springs. Maybe it'll be a golfer and you can play golf. Fort Worth's 2018 Neighborhood of the Year is a group that's tackled what they described as a never-ending circle of red tape and bureaucracy, and yet they fail to take no for an answer, thank goodness, for their tenacious fight to convince the railroad to silence the crossings, we congratulate the Berkeley Place neighborhood as Neighborhood of the Year. And, and. Berkeley residents say the train horns used to blow loud and long at all hours, even 3 a.m. The city has no juris jurisdiction over railroads, and even the Federal Railroad Administration could do little. So Berkeley Place began putting together a coalition. They started with six surrounding neighborhood associations, then contacted businesses and schools that were also bothered by the noise. They found that officials were more willing to listen and help because of there were a large number of people being affected. Money was another obstacle. Silent crossings can cost more than a million dollars each to install. Berkeley Place worked with the city to identify funds that legally could be spent on railroad crossings. Then the group called on elected officials at the state and federal levels to help. In the end, Berkeley says it was the cooperation of other neighborhoods that pushed the project forward and will have residents sleeping better and enjoying being in their backyards again. Congratulations, Berkeley Place, our Neighborhood of the Year. Congratulations to all our winners and thank you, Mayor Price. We would also like to give a big thank you to our major sponsor, United Healthcare. I'd like to ask United Healthcare's Aaron Graves to come up so we can thank him for providing today's lunch and so much more. Good afternoon. Can you guys hear me? It's funny because as a kid, my mom said I talked a lot and I should be a preacher, right? So I guess I have my chance now to, to in the pulpit here to be a preacher. But again, my name is Aaron Graves, and I'm responsible for the relationship between the City of Fort Worth's Benefits Department and United Healthcare. And it's an honor to be here because this is our third year sponsoring this event. And the work that you do is truly, truly amazing. And every year I hear new and innovative ideas that are coming out and helping your community. And I, I just applaud you for the work that you do. Um, the work that you do not only strengthens your neighborhood, but it strengthens Fort Worth, the state of Texas, and the country as a whole. And when there's a lot of bad news out there and, and, and horrible stories, I know and hear about what's going on in Fort Worth, and it just makes me smile. And I really appreciate that. Um, to that extent, it's funny because I always talk about my wife because I have to. <laughs> She's a, a Fort Worth native. And unbeknownst to me, she was out here looking at houses. <laughs> we live in Richardson. So there's a good chance I might be out in the audience with you next year, right? <laughs> so um, thank you. Again, I just want to applaud your efforts, your compassion, the relationships that you built in this room. They're right in line with our values at United Healthcare. If there's anything we can do to help, we'll gladly do that. And you know, I just want to say thank you to Catherine as well. Okay, I've worked with Catherine for the last three years, and I look forward to getting that email and that call in late summer. Say, Aaron, it's that time of year again, <laughs> and and being here to help. When she calls, I'm there. And uh, her and her team, Michelle, you've done a fabulous job, and I appreciate our our partnership and willingness to work together. Thank you. We have the giveaway. All right, everyone, pull out your tickets. We'll give you a second to pull out your tickets, okay? As a reminder, we're giving away an Amazon Fire, okay? Call your number? Okay, let's hear <laughs> Okay, you have to be here to win, so let's see where we have. Ticket number 9960. Four zero. 
Are you here? All right. Awesome. Thank you, Aaron. Um, before we close, I'd like to let all of our finalists know that we do have a certificate up here for you. Um, will all the finalists from all of the award categories please come up to the stage afterwards and pick up your certificate? And remember, I have a silver ring and some reading glasses that are still up here. So thank you all for coming today. Please let us know what you thought of the event so that we can make it better. And thanks for all you do to make Fort Worth a great place to live, work, and play.